Hey everybody, welcome back to my Pink Room of Doom. As always, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to be upgrading my Squire Bullet Deluxe. So, I'm gonna go on record here and say that this thing doesn't necessarily need to be upgraded as it sits right now, which to me is absolutely bonkers because this is a 20 year old Squire Bullet. When you hear Squire Bullet, you think of like bottom tier, cheapest Squire you can get and you don't think much of it, right? This is a 20 year old guitar and it still, still holds up. <laughs> It's been thrown around, it's been beat up, it's got scratches and dents and dings and bruises and any other kind of damage you can think of, it's got it to it. It was clearly played a lot, it's clearly thrown around a lot. It's 20 years old and it stays in tune. It sounds good. Aside from the volume pot cracking a little bit, it, it works, right? You plug it in and play it and it's it stays in tune. It's a great, great guitar. It wasn't like that when I got it, Again, you're gonna go watch the original video on this. By all means, I talk about it there um, at length. It, it doesn't need to be upgraded right now. I'm doing it as not really a precaution, but again, with the volume pot kind of cracking, that's saying that maybe it's time to change that. The output jack doesn't need to be changed, but I figured if I'm gonna be changing the pot and the pickup, I might as well go ahead and just gut the electronics and change all of that. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Um, we're going to need to take off this pit guard to get under here. There is no cavity in the back or anything of a strat. Um, everything's done on the front, right? So we'll take off the pit guard. We'll take off this cover here for the output jack. I'm sorry that the glare is getting on the body there, but uh, we're going to take that off and kind of go ahead and do that. Now, in the original video, I talked about the aesthetic I want to have of this thing. We're going to gold it out, right? So it's going to be black with all gold um, kind of hardware, right? So I'm going to try to get a, a gold pickup cover here. I'm not doing that today. Um, gold bridge, gold saddles, uh, gold pickup, which we have that gold covered pickup. And then eventually I'm going to probably put some gold tuners on there. Now, it doesn't have those on there. I'm not in any hurry to change those because, um, again, they're holding up. So that's what we're doing thus far. Today we're going to be changing the pot, we're going to be changing the output jack, and we're going to be changing the pickup. Let's go ahead and take a look at the parts we're going to be using. So first, for the volume pot, we're going to be using a 500k CTS pot. These are tried and true. I've used these in all of my other upgrade videos which I've only done one, but all of my other upgrades that I've done, I've used CTS pots. Um, I'll have another upgrade video coming along where we won't be using CTS pots, but stick around for that. For the output jack, I typically go with Switchcraft, but today we're gonna be using a Pure Tone output jack. Now I got this one because it's a dual contact, right? Um, I wanted to see if that made any kind of difference. So I'm excited to put it in here and see what it does. So we're gonna see if that has any kind of impact on the tone, the sound, the durability, what have you. Now for the pickup, I've gone with something kind of interesting. This is an Epiphone pickup. In fact, this is the Epiphone pickup out of my red Les Paul Custom, which I also have a full video on that if you wanna go check that out. So I didn't video the process of me changing the pickup in that guitar just because I changed the pickup. I didn't do anything else with that. So spoiler alert, that's gonna be the next upgrade video that I do at some point. I only changed the pickup in that guitar because I wanted the the Jerry Cantrell look. I wanted to have the uncovered bridge and the covered neck. So this is the pickup out of that guitar. I really like the way that this sounds, ironically enough, because it is a Korean made one and I, regular viewers will know my qualms with the Korean made uh, Epiphone Electronics. This one was pretty good. So realistically, I don't think there's gonna be much, much difference in the sound per se, but for now, it'll get me the look that I'm looking for and I'll know that I'll be putting something in there that's still gonna sound pretty good. And there we go. So. Let's go ahead and get the pit guard off this thing, take the uh, strings, we'll probably just pull them off, put them to the side, something like that, because these are still new strings, I really don't wanna change them yet, but if it comes to it, I will. But let's go ahead and take all this stuff off and start the upgrade. One week later. Okay, so, as you can see, we've jumped straight back to me. Um, I did not film the process of upgrading the, uh, the Squire Bullet. Um, I ran into a lot of problems. Uh, so I did film some stuff, but I ended up uh, getting rid of the, the film because it just didn't end up working out the way that I wanted it to. I do have the guitar upgraded, okay? But I just didn't feel like I was gonna take you guys along on this frustrating process of me having to file things down, um, widen holes, <laughs> um, 
just all kind of stuff, you know, weird wiring issues, which is strange considering it's a one pickup guitar. It's pretty, pretty basic, but either way, I wanted to keep this video going just to show you what I did, kind of show you, uh, you know, how much of a difference it makes. Cause to me, I hear a little bit of a difference, but anyway, I've got the guitar here. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'll kind of talk more about the problems that I had and uh, we'll go ahead and get to uh, a comparison. So here it is, as you can tell, it looks a little bit different. So um, I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned earlier or whatever, it's like a week later that I'm filming this part, but I wanted to go for the black and gold aesthetic. I really, really like that. And um, I've had a guitar before that had the black and gold and it just looked mint. So this looks really, really cool to me. Um, all of the work that I did thus far is on the body. So I still have the stock tuners and the stock string tree on it. Um, they're not causing me any kind of tuning issues right now. So I'm not gonna change them right now, but I will eventually. But let's go ahead and talk about the body of this guitar and kind of some of the issues that I had. So the main issues that I had were with the pig guard, okay? I had to widen the hole for the pot, which I've had to do that not just on this, I've had to do that on my Les Pauls too. Um, when I go from, I guess, Alpha Pots or whatever pots they have in there before, over to CTS, which is what I like to use, I've had to go in and widen the holes just a little bit. Uh, you can go get a drill bit from you know, Home Depot or whatever and just, you know, kind of use it. Like, I think it's a one inch drill bit. I don't have it with me to show you, but um, either way, it's something that's just, it's just that much bigger than it needs to be. So I had to do that with this uh, CTS pot in there, obviously. Second issue that I had was that the holes did not line up properly with the body. So I did have to drill new holes, which I expected that. That's not that big of a deal. The other issue that I've had was down here by the bridge too, was uh, that this route down here did not fit perfectly. So I had to sand the edge right here. And you can probably see it. I didn't do that great of a job. I got a little impatient and just put it on there. I got it close enough, but it's still, doesn't fit just right. I may take it off and, and, and sand it down at some point later on in the future, but for right now, it works. And then the other issue that I had with the pit guard was with the humbucker route. So I did have to sand that too. As you can see, it's a covered humbucker in there. It didn't quite fit right. Again, it was just that much off. So I just took a sanding block, put it in there and just kind of sanded it back. It took about 20 minutes. Uh, the sanding block that I had wasn't very abrasive, but uh, and it had been used for other things as well, but I got it to fit. Um, it fits very snug in there. It's still kind of got room to go up and down. I can adjust it and everything. So that's good to go. Other than that, those were really the only issues that I had. Um, I did mention there were some wiring issues that I had. I put a different jack in here. I think that's what caused it. Just kind of flipped everything backwards, but that's all fixed. It plays great now. Let's go ahead and talk about everything else in depth here. So with the pit guard, brand new pit guards, the three plies, you can see it's got the white on it. Uh, so it's black, white, black. I really, really like that. It kind of adds a little bit of extra flavor to it. Looks you know, a little nicer than it was before. Holding that pit guard into the body, got some gold screws to add to that gold and black aesthetic. This is the original knob that was on here before. Obviously it's, you know, it's black, it's, it's a knob. The pickup in here is actually the Epiphone bridge pickup from my red Les Paul Custom. Um, it, it sounds really good in this guitar. It sounded really good in the, the Les Paul Custom as a matter of fact, but it sounds really good in here and it's the only gold pickup I had laying around. So I put it in there, I really like it. Um, yeah, and again, it's got that kind of tattered look to it. This is an older pickup, so I think it looks really, really cool. Got some gold bridge saddles here. The bridge saddles on the uh, the original bridge saddles weren't necessarily bad. It had a couple of stripped screws, so I did have uh, trouble adjusting the uh, action and everything down here, but these work great, cool. The bridge is still stock. Um, it's just the chrome whatever bridge. Um, I think it actually looks pretty cool juxtaposed to the gold, so I may keep that. I may change it out to gold and just go full. Uh, gaudy look on here. I don't know. We'll see. Coming down here to the output jack. This is a pure tone output jack. I normally go with Switchcraft, but this one's a dual contact. So it's got two grounds and two hot posts on it, which I think is really, really cool. And then I got the gold output jack cover here. So there's that. I got the uh, gold elliptical. I think I've mentioned that already. Strap buttons here from Diodario. I got those uh, using my rewards points where I buy all their strings. And then I've got this strung up with some Diodario 10 to 52s. A lot of people are gonna say, hey, why don't you use nines? I kind of agree, but 10 to 52 is all I had laying around. I like 10s normally, but um, with that longer scale length, I may have to go down to nines, maybe nine and a half. I don't know. Anyway, so there's that. Again, the tuners and the string tree are still stock. They will be changed at some point. The nut probably needs to be changed at some point. But other than that, this thing plays great. Sounds really good. 
Um, let's go ahead and take a look now. Uh, I've got two different types of videos. So I got the ones where it was stock and then I've got the ones that I'm gonna film now that are as it is now. So let's go ahead and take a look at those and uh, see what you think about it.